I'd like to call to order the meeting of the Village Board for February 11th, 2020. Can you please join us for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Village Clerk, would you please call the roll? President D. Simone. Here. Trustee Carmona. Here. Trustee Franz. Here. Trustee Fry. Here. Trustee Lomax. Here. Trustee Pinacola. Here. Trustee Perez. Here. It's seven. At this time, we will move to public comment. Does anyone wish to address the board? If so, please approach the podium and state uh, your yes, name. Yes, we have two. Uh, Mr. Tom Lawler. Yes, please. Forgive me, it's my first time doing this, so I needed a little direction. Tom Lawler, my address is 427 Deer Path in Wooddale. Um, now my three minutes, just have at it. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, awesome. Uh, so my wife and daughter and I have lived in the Bensonville, Wooddale area for um, about 15 years. My wife grew up in Bensonville and has lived there for 51 years. Um, we own our home as well as a number of uh, commercial properties. Um, we own a property at 1200 West Irving Park Road. Our current tenant is uh, O'Hare Auto Body. Um, also on that property is a billboard. Um, unbeknownst to me, my father-in-law, who passed away 22 years ago, had uh, received a variance from Bensonville to have that tow yard there, um, but needed to get rid of the billboard. Um, we didn't know that. The billboard's been there for 25 years. Um, I guess, unbeknownst to us, Clear Channel, who advertises there, reached out to Bensonville and said they wanted to go digital. Um, that triggered the, oh, 25 years ago you made this deal. <laughs> um, so we received this letter that said, yank it. Um, we rely on the income that that billboard uh, supplies us. Um, so I approached uh, the, um, the village. I spoke to Scott, who was very kind, but didn't seem to have any options for us as far as coming up with an alternative. Um, basically, it's uh, get rid of the billboard or get rid of O'Hare Auto Body. Um, Tom Stubold's a close friend. We don't want to get rid of him. We also, however, don't want to get rid of the billboard. I know that the uh, Clear Channel has offered to allow Bensonville to advertise on it, to have Amber Alerts, to have all of those things, um, which I think are great. So basically, I didn't know we had the opportunity to address the board. Um, so I appreciate the opportunity, and I'm not really certain what I'm looking for other than the option to keep both. I mean, that would be ideal um, if there's ways that we could provide something to Bensonville um, in order to make that sort of a, a good thing for both of us. It just seems a shame that after 25 years of it being okay, um, all of a sudden it needs to go, um, and that there's no appeal process or options or any sort of other discussion other than yank it. Um, so, wow, I got it all out in three minutes. Um, so, yeah, Mr. Thank you. Lawler, if I may. Um, sure. Scott, do you have Mr. Lawler's information? Yeah. I'd be happy to, uh, we'll call you and schedule a meeting. Scott and I will sit down with you. We can talk through some options and uh, the village's position on this. Awesome. All right. Th thank, thank you so you. much for hearing me out. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Judge James McCluskey. Uh, thank you, Mr. President and council members. My name is Jim McCluskey. I am a judge in the Circuit Court of DuPage County. I've been a judge for approximately two years. I was appointed at the age of 64, so I'm the senior citizen judge on the bench, and I've been there about two years. Uh, I have some ties to Bensonville. My uh, grandfather was an Irish immigrant and uh, worked at the Bensonville Yards. My daughter worked at the Johnson School for 10 years as an ESL teacher. Um, so. I do have some ties to the Bensonville community. I grew up in Melrose Park, not far from Bensonville. Uh, let me just tell you a few things about what uh, I see with respect to DuPage County, the police department, uh, the 20 municipalities that are contained within DuPage County, the state's attorney's office, the sheriff's department, which I know works quite well with all the municipalities uh, on their special law enforcement committee. Uh, and enforcement uh, task force, and also the judges. The judge, judges, there's 46 judges in DuPage County. There's a judge available 24-7, 365 days a week for the duty judge. 
I had the pleasure of doing it during Thanksgiving and Christmas, but I found that the police department that I work with, and I've been a lawyer for 41 years now, mostly in civil, but then when I'm working with the, with the police department, they are so very professional, and I applaud the Bensonville Police Department for their professionalism, their quick response with respect to crime in Bensonville and all the municipalities in Bensonville. Uh, I'm available, and the judges are available at 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning. I get those calls with respect to the, uh, any type of uh, search warrant they would like, uh, and if, they, if they, they show probable cause, a judge is available to respond within 5 to 10 minutes of the call to the sheriff's office from the Bensonville Police Department. Also, in January, it has changed where arrest warrants are now uh, by iPad with a judge who is on call to uh, issue arrest warrants as opposed to the police having to uh, visit the County Farm Road or Addison Field Court or wherever they, they are required to go. We can do it by iPad at any hour of the day, 365 days a week. So I applaud the Bensonville Police Department. I applaud all the police departments in their conjunction working with Sheriff Mendrick and Bob Berlin. And the judges want to uh, have a, a strong coalition with all the police departments in DuPage County. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's it? That's, this that's will conclude it. our public comment. Is there a motion to approve the minutes from the January 28th, 2020 Village Board meeting? So yeah, moved. Motion. Is there a second to the motion? Second. second. Are there any modifications to the minutes? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, please say nay. Motion carries and the minutes are approved. Uh, the next item of business is to approve the warrant in the amount of $835,475.60. Is there a motion to approve the warrant? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion on the warrant? Please call the roll. Trustee Carmona? Yes. Trustee Franz? Yes. Trustee Fry? Yes. Trustee Lomax? Yes. Trustee Penicola? Yes. Trustee Perez? Yes. That's six. The motion carries and the warrant is approved. There are no items on the consent agenda for today. <coughs> um, under community and economic development, we do have a presentation of the DuPage County Route 83 corridor study uh, and the pre preliminary recommendations. And I, I believe I'll do a quick introduction. Um, if you remember back in May at committee, um, Michael was here with his team, and that's when we did the awesome thought drawing where it yes. looked like a piece yes. of art at the end of it uh, for what we thought Route 83 w was important to us. <laughs> um, Michael's back with his team to present on their preliminary findings. So, Michael, if you want to take to the stand, and uh, or you could do it from the floor. Do up here. Yeah, do it, if you want to use that microphone, that'd be great. That's okay. Just, just give him that, that mic. Sure. Yeah. Oh. Right on the edge, maybe? Although I'll I never have a, okay. I generally don't have a problem being heard. Uh, no one's ever <laughs> accused me of not being loud enough. So thank you very much, uh, Mr. Manager. Uh, Mr. President, members of the board, thank you for, for having us back. Um, I guess it ha was May that we were here, wasn't it? Um, I would just say that coordinating five communities in the county is time consuming. Um, but uh, we wanted to share what, uh, what we have uh, come up with for you. I'm joined today uh, by Carol Brobeck from our office at Tesco Associates uh, and Cindy Fish from Fish Transportation Group. Um, again, for the record, my name is Michael Blue. I'm a principal with Tesco Associates uh, in Evanston. And when we were here, we were just kind of getting started and we were saying, well, what's important on the corridor and, and all those kinds of questions, what's important to the village. And we have been, um, working on that since. What I'd like to cover with you um, tonight is what have we been doing since we were here. Um, talk a little bit about these preliminary recommendations uh, and then talk about what's next. So since we met, um, there were two open houses that were uh, to the community um, and we've, we we're doing these uh, community workshops in each of the towns uh, and we're um, preparing the recommendation. So that's come. I, I believe you had the, the summary report, the two-page version of the 30-something page report. Before diving in, I just wanted to kind of take a step back and remind all of you what we're, what we're up to here. Um, ultimately, what we're looking at here is going to be an update to DuPage County's land use plan. So the county has got a plan. Its authority addresses unincorporated properties, not properties that are in the village or in any of the other corridor communities. Um, you have a land use plan, communities have a land use plan, county has a land use plan. It answers that magical question, 
What does the county want to see here? What does the village want to see here? So it's important to have that planned out. As the county approached this plan um, and did it under the auspices of CMAP, the Chicago's Regional Planning, Chicago Metropolitan Agency for Planning, the Regional Planning Agency, their thought was to update the plan, but to do it in a bottom-up approach. So rather than the county just kind of say, well, you know, here's what we ought to be doing, they said, let's make sure that we're in concert with the issues that are facing the communities, with the land use plans that each of the communities have, so that we're not at odds, quite frankly, but we're, we're working together. And this has been very much a, a, a bottom-up process, uh, and the county has directed that and is really supportive of that. So ultimately, the idea is that the land use recommendations that are part of this plan will be adopted by the county as the update to their uh, land use plan. There's a number of other recommendations that we'll, we'll talk about as we go through, and I'm looking forward to a chance to discuss them with you. So before I dive in, any questions just generally about where we're at or what we're up to? Great. Um, in terms of the key considerations, what, what did we learn? What is the context in which we're doing, <coughs> excuse me, in which we're doing this planning? There are a number of realities that we're not going to change. One is that the corridor is pretty much developed. And the corridor, you'll recall, uh, is Devon on the north, um, St. Charles Road on the south, centered on Route 83 a mile either side. This is primarily a developed area. Um, except for a golf course, which became incorporated right after we started doing this. Um, so really, a lot of what the plan is going to look at is going to be uh, small infill and small, small redevelopments. Um, the unincorporated areas that exist are primarily smaller and fragmented. The larger unincorporated areas are, frankly, the residential areas that are primarily surrounded by or, or closest to, to you all here in Bensonville. Route 83 has got a fascinating character. It is not a consistent kind of road as you go through it. There are spots where, again, between St. Charles and Devon, where it's kind of like an interstate. There are spots up here in Bensonville where it's kind of like a, a busy commercial road. There's no one character. There's no one way to treat it. There's no one way to deal with it, um, for better or worse. The other for better or worse about Route 83 is there's a lot of traffic on it. You may have noticed this. Um, there's a lot of traffic. There's a lot of trucks. Um, it's a challenging trip to drive up and down 83. Uh, folks we talk to when we talk to residents and businesses, um, not unusual, I've seen this in other projects, because when you ask a resident, how do you deal with Route 83? They go, oh, well, I don't do 83. I go up and down and around, and I go up York, and then I cut out. Right? It's one of these roads that everybody's got their way to, to avoid. Um, the flip side of it, though, is it is an economic development engine for this part of DuPage County that one may not shake a stick at, right? It, is, it brings commerce, industry, the businesses that thrive from the airport, that thrive from the access, they, they really are, are significant here. Um, again, these are the realities that we're working within. Salt Creek, a little more to the south of the, of the study area, uh, creates challenges for any kind of, kind of redevelopment. Um, and the other thing about Route 83 is that it runs adjacent to all the communities. And just to recap, um, Bensonville, Wooddale, uh, Addison, Villa Park, and Elmhurst were the um, five communities that were part of the study. And the, the road runs down the edge of each. Um, if it ran through the middle of each town, I think there might be a little more concern about its aesthetics, its character, how it looks, how it feels. We, turn, we coined the term the yuck factor of driving up and down the road because we did it several times with an eye towards what was it like, not just cursing the traffic as, as a commuter would. Um, but it, it really is, is an area that is just not the most pleasant place to drive. And so it, in, in the planners in us, it, it sparks a question about how to do that. But most importantly, our charge was to deal with, with land use. The bottom line, and we explain this at the open houses to many residents, some Bensonville residents, some in these unincorporated areas. The vast majority of the areas are not going to change in terms of their land use. The areas that are unincorporated, again, just to recap, county only deals from a land use standpoint with the unincorporated areas. They're highlighted in colors here. The um, shaded gray areas are incorporated uh, currently in Bensonville and the other communities that you'll see. But there's not really a change in land use here. These residential areas that, that you know well, there's no plan for these to turn over to become something different. Um, other part of the community here further south, the same sort of thing. Um, whether or not they annex or not is a whole other issue. Um, a recommendation of the plan is to, to encourage annexation. We know that that's a 
big issue and a big question here. We're not pretending that it's not. But in general, um, the county's approach and, and development or, or government is more efficiently provided to incorporated areas. The services are closer, they're more efficiently provided, uh, and the county's goal is to see that these areas be incorporated. For the municipalities, the other benefit is that you have control of it. So if there's a code enforcement issue on a property that's in the county and it's next to or near a resident of the village and the resident of the village calls your staff and says, hey, this is a problem. Well, it's not something you have jurisdiction over. So there's a benefit to having that jurisdiction. But from a land use standpoint, we're really not looking at, at areas in and around, or actually around Bensonville, um, changing. Uh, I'll run through the other areas that are adjacent to other parts of the of the corridor. Everybody's been very interested to hear what's going on with their neighbors, so feel free to stop me if you have any questions. Um, but again, the same sort of thing here in, in this part of the planning area, uh, which you see is kind of between Addison and, and Wooddale. Um, scattered residential areas, not really much need for them to change. Um, a couple things that have changed uh, have changed in, in Wooddale. So this purple area that you see right off of Washington Street um, up until last year was an entirely residential area. Um, a developer came through and bought all 13 of these homes, um, took them down, and is now doing, uh, has actually incorporated into the, the city, and is now doing uh, a large-scale industrial development here. The area is primarily surrounded by industrial, and this recommendation comes right out of the Wooddale plan. Um, but this speaks to one of the market findings that we had as part of the study, which you all know well, um, is that the whole logistics distribution aspect of the industrial market is as hot as anybody has seen it in, in recent memory. To that end, um, the transformation of unincorporated single-family areas uh, in Wooddale, uh, in this area, and that's Bryn Mawr up at the top of the map there, um, in this area has, is looking at the same sort of transition. Um, and when we showed this at the open house, we had residents from this area come and say, this is great, don't let them stop doing this. Part of the idea here is that this is not folks losing homes. These are folks who live in an area that's a nice neighborhood, but the homes are at an age where it's either time to renovate them significantly, um, maybe even sell them and have them be torn down, and the neighborhood is kind of between an industrial area and Route 83, and this is an opportunity for them to, to move and to move on. And for the most part, um, folks are, are interested in doing this. So that's uh, two areas that, that are seeing significant transitions. Um, this area here in, in Villa Park, this is one of the things that as we've gone through and met with the steering committee, which is a representative of each town, um, that the steering committee pointed out to us uh, that this part of Villa Park, so this is just south of North Avenue here, um, is really, it's not in their current plan to be single family, it currently is. Um, it's a, a mixed use commercial corridor area. Uh, and in talking with the staff and talking with the village, their direction is that this remain in that that type of use. So this residential recommendation, again, because of the direction of the village, will we'll be changing. This is uh, uh, Lake Street, where you see the, the red up there. Red is for commercial. Uh, and this is Lake Street immediately west of Route 83. Um, if you know the area, you know that as you keep going west, you get to a rather lovely stormwater management area when you get to Villa Wooddale Road there. Between there and 83, could use some aesthetic enhancement, um, which is very much on the agenda of the village. Part of the issue is, again, this is where Salt Creek and the floodplain is a problem, um, but this is a, a big goal of the village of Addison is to enhance this gateway. There's a hotel that just opened on the south side of Lake Street um, just to kind of help you get your bearings a little bit. So this is something that uh, Addison is very interested in, that they're looking, uh, that they're working hard to make happen and is uh, reflected in the recommendations of the plan. Uh, in terms of this area, again, this is one that has got primarily uh, unincorporated areas. Um, this is mostly Addison area. Um, these are some nicer, larger homes in the unincorporated area, and these are kind of these one-offs uh, where people will periodically annex, but, but the whole area uh, is not as of yet. So that's the big picture land use, right? So when, uh, when DuPage County adopts this, this will become their formal land use plan or part of their formal land use plan, which of course addresses the whole county. The land use plan for this area is pretty old. Um, I forget what year it was done, but the version I had was typed. So that ought to give you an idea as to how long it's been around. Um, typewriter, never mind. Um, 
the other thing we did was take a look at some of the key opportunity sites, which were both, um, well, opportunities for development, but also examples of what kind of infill might happen. And so we looked at a few things. Part of it was to address this notion of value added for redevelopment. That's kind of what's going on uh, in, um, in, in Wooddale, where, where folks have the opportunity to, to add value to their property, well, which may be worth more as industrial than, <coughs> excuse me, than it would be um, as residential. So that's one of the, the upsides of this development process that's going on. This is a, a development scheme for the, uh, the site that we talked about just moments ago in Addison. And this is not meant to be the answer for how it develops, but this sketch shows a couple of ideas. One is that um, the, the character images below and on the side point to the fact that it ought to be something that's of the caliber of the attractiveness of the, um, of the hotel that's been, that recently opened, of the, um, the stormwater management area that's there. And also, if you know, if you keep going down Lake Street before you get to um, 355, there's a couple of nice new developments that the village is very proud of. And uh, the idea here is to do the same sort of thing. Best done with a larger development. If you take a few modest sites, um, it's harder to do a complete development. This area also includes the opportunity for uh, a few residential areas or a few residential properties uh, to, to have an opportunity to, to move on. There's a notion that we raised in the plan which is missing middle housing. Uh, which you may have read in all the planning magazines that I know we all read, um, but is the notion of adding housing in, in ways that are not really large scale, right? So that the idea of adding affordability to the market where there are large lots that could maybe accommodate two homes instead of one, or you could put two lots together and have four instead of two. Um, this is an idea that we've not picked a spot for, but is one that we wanted to raise in the plan to make communities aware, um, primarily, again, for the unincorporated areas uh, that could happen. This is, this is a trend that is picking up um, nationally. Uh, there are a couple of states that have actually um, eliminated single-family zoning in the municipalities. Uh, Washington did this. What was the other one? Who's that? Minnesota. Oregon and Minnesota did as well. Um, so that this would effectively be allowed almost by right. Um, so this is something that we wanted to just bring attention to in the plan. Um, it's an idea that, that helps add value to the properties and, and help to add housing opportunities. Um, this last site is one that is uh, most applicable to you all. This is the church site that's on 83, kind of across from Deer Path. Um, and this is one that we'll be very interested to hear what, what you all have to say about. This is a site I've talked to a couple of people about at the open houses because they're, they're intrigued. The idea here from a land use standpoint is that there be some sort of townhome development here. Um, how dense that development might be is a question we'd very much like to hear what, what you all think um, is appropriate. It could certainly be denser than, than what's here. This is a relatively low density townhome development. What's remarkable about this site is if the property owners decide that they're going to sell and they're going to turn it over into something else, the opportunity to turn it into residential is just really interesting because it's surrounded by schools and parks. And the opportunity to have an area along Route 83 where everything is so auto-oriented um, to actually have where folks can walk to schools and parks um, and to have some screening and some buffering separating them from the the, the noise and, and the fumes and such of 83 is a fascinating opportunity and one that, that we think should be uh, part of the county's plan. The, um, again, not specifically a land use, but, but related ideas are those of urban design, uh, wayfinding, and, and landscaping. A um, couple of things, again, as I said, when one drives down 83, it's just not aesthetically the most pleasant experience. Um, so what can be done about that? The other thing that we knew about 83 is that there are not going to be big fixes, right? Big fixes take big changes, which cost money, take time, and are maybe not even as attractive as the problem you're trying to fix. Um, had a lovely chat with any number of people at the open house who said, how are we going to get all the trucks off of 83? And I suggested doing away the tolls on 294, that that might help. And they looked at me like I was goofy. And I was. Um, but that, that's kind of the kind of fix that fixes a problem like that. Um, it hurts me to stand up here and say to you that there's, there's some things we just can't do anything about. Um, that truck traffic, that character is, is not likely 
to change on, on 83. So what can be done? And we talked in terms, we thought in terms of a collection of small things, both in terms of design and transportation, which, which I'm going to ask Cindy to speak to in just a minute. Um, so the idea of adding some sort of wayfinding, some sort of signage that you see an example of here that says, yes, we know you're on 83, but did you know that just right down this road here um, is downtown Bensonville and that there's an opportunity to come here and that there's um, an industrial area over here or that there's whatever over here directing some of those thousands of cars every day um, for an economic development opportunity. Also something to create some sense of place. If you are somewhere, it's just not as frustrating to be driving along. So that's the idea here of the landscaping. So you see uh, up in the top middle and the top right, you see some of these opportunities for landscaping. And we understand that this very much involves working with IDOT. Um, but the idea of trying to do some stormwater management, again, even more so where the Salt Creek is an issue, um, to do some of these native plantings either in the, the loops of the frontage roads or alongside of the of the road with with bioswales as you see down on the bottom row there um, any opportunity that we can get to encourage this sort of thing and we're currently um, working with IDOT and they're reviewing the plan so we'll, we'll see how that goes um, the other idea that that was that really spoke to us was one that you've implemented is the idea of the trees down the median on 83 and I know that that's not as easy as it looks. Yes, I know, every staff, you're all kind of going, um, and we get it. Um, we know that salt kills all those plantings. We know that it's a maintenance hassle. We know that it's a huge challenge. Um, but the example that it sets is a really good one. The idea that we continue to look to the aesthetic enhancements there are something that we think is interesting. Um, and if and when IDOT invents the world's greatest salt tolerant tree, you know, we'd love to see it there. Um, the other possibility, and, and again, this is one that relates more to Bensonville than the other communities, is when you're driving through 83 in town at the north end of the corridor, um, where it's more of a, of a major commercial road rather than that, that highway interstate, um, there are businesses, some of them industrial primarily along the sides of the road. The ones that have got landscaping are really actually quite nice. Now, we know that this is private property. This is not something that um, the county or, or, frankly, even the village uh, is, is going to change. Um, but something to consider. So if and when there's new development there, if that's something that maybe the village could encourage or highlight, um, if that was something that you thought enough of to maybe incorporate into your landscape planning or your landscape requirements, um, that's something we'd like to at least put on the table to think about. There are just not that many opportunities to improve the aesthetic. And that was one that really, really spoke to us. So I'd like for um, Cindy to come and talk about uh, some of the transportation ideas that we've incorporated. Do you mind? You came all this way. I did. So just focusing on the transportation, really what we're trying to do is just balance all the different like modes, the different, um, the different users, the um, just kind of reimagining really kind of what it can look like and kind of focusing on more of that transition into the different, into the communities and that crossing of 83. Um, we wanna get rid of it. Um, so we, these are some of the other areas that we were, this one? pardon me. Yeah, so this, so for really, I think for <coughs> this year, we are looking more at the, um, at the, uh, the intersections, particularly at, at like um, Oak Meadow and Third, mm -hmm. which is a big one. Um, looking at where we could fit in uh, uh, shared use paths, um, uh, improving the bus stops. But really, again, just looking at that transition into the, into the neighborhoods, um, looking at how we the, what the improved crosswalks, um, signage, lighting, you know, all those things that would that would be helpful. Mm -hmm. And then there were some longer term things. I'm looking at at service that uh, Paige was looking at. You know how we can make it um, just kind of in the in the these are this is a bigger mm -hmm. than than uh, what you were talking about, but to, um, you know bus rapid transit, kind of those long term visions that we can look at. And again, we can um, certainly answer any questions or would welcome any, any discussion. Um, in closing, a couple thoughts about um, implementation of the, of the plan. Uh, a few things. One, I already mentioned annexation. The annexation is, is a goal of the county. Um, it's got benefits to the municipalities, too. So where possible, um, annexing properties is a recommendation of the plan. Again, 
we understand well the, the question marks and the concerns that relate to annexation here uh, and know that, it, that that's a different, saying this here is different than any of the other communities. Uh, the other thing that we thought was significant was the idea of continuing the cooperation between the communities and the agencies in the, the county. Um, you know, planners always stand up here and they go, we need more communication. <clears throat> well, you know what, honestly, um, it helps. It, it really does. Uh, this is the third corridor plan along these lines that the county has done. Um, they also did Lake Street, and Addison had a, felt they had a lot of benefit out of the Lake Street version of the plan because they had a line of communication open with the county. They had a plan for what ought to be there. And when some zoning questions came up, uh, they, were, they were able to look to the plan to, to create some ongoing communication with, uh, with the county. So we think that keeping the steering committee together is, is a way to, to do that. Um, to the extent that it's appropriate for any of the communities to revisit boundary agreements, uh, we know that you have one uh, with Wooddale, and it's maybe time to look at it because it's maybe being followed, maybe not. Um, but uh, to the extent that's of, of benefit to the communities, we thought that would be important. Uh, looking at local codes and uh, ordinances to incorporate some of these ideas, like I mentioned, if some of these landscape ideas have, uh, have appealed to you, that might be something you, you would put in your code. Uh, and the other is, of course, to, um, to think in terms of the, the ongoing concepts, uh, uh, planning concepts of the, the CMAP plan of on to 2050, the regional plan. Um, it talks about inclusive growth. It talks about resilience. A lot of that has to do with storm, everything from stormwater to economic development. Um, and it talks about prioritizing investments, which is clearly what you all do uh, every time you, you get to budget season. So these notions of CMAP are also very applicable and important here. So what's next? Um, we're going to complete this second round of, uh, of discussions. We've had the two workshops, uh, the two community open houses, rather. Uh, we had them the last week of January and the third week of January. We, I think between them we saw about 125 people and had very much just this conversation with, with a lot of them. Um, part of our uh, process is to reach out to local groups and organizations. So um, to the extent there is perhaps a homeowners association or a business association uh, that it would benefit the village for us to come and do this presentation to so that they know what's up, um, we're available to do that and we'll continue to be in touch with staff about that. Uh, and then our next step, we have um, this meeting to have with the county board uh, and then we're looking to finalize the plan. So that's what we've been doing since May. Um, if there are thoughts, questions, ideas, your, your staff has been usually helpful. I would just let you know that. Usually um, helpful? What's that? Usually helpful? Usually helpful, yeah, because you haven't seen what the others have done. Um, no, I, you all hosted one of the open houses, and staff have been very responsive. Um, I'm not available at 3 o'clock in the morning, though, if you have a planning problem, as, so I apologize for that. Um, I mean, you can call. I don't know if I'll answer the phone, but um, you re it really has been a, a pleasure to, to work with, with staff here, and, and the whole process has been, has been really uh, enlightening, and we hope helpful to everybody. So, Yes, um, on that, Michael, I want to say thank you for everything that your team is doing. Um, your client is obviously the county. They're the one paying you, so anytime we can get free planning from the county, we're glad to <laughs> utilize that time. Um, but it is, it is exciting to see um, so many units of government working together, and uh, you know, it's not often that the planners of, one, of Bensonville get together, the planners of all the other communities, yeah. and share notes, and sometimes just commiserate, but also uh, learn best practices. So. Um, if we can keep that steering committee together in perpetuity, I think it will uh, yield dividends for us in the long run. Glad to hear you say that. Any questions from the board? Thank you once again. Thanks very much. Pleasure Thank to you. see you. Uh, moving on, we do not have anything on their finance or police department, public works, or recreation. So on to the uh, presidential remarks. We do have a proclamation and recognition of, a, of the American Heart Association and the Children's Heart Foundation in the village of Schiller, uh, village of Bensonville. Oops, sorry about that. Would the deputy clerk please read the proclamation? In recognition of the American Heart Association and Children's Heart Foundation. Whereas the village of Bensonville is committed in recognizing the American Heart Association and the Children's Heart Foundation in the month of February. And whereas heart disease can happen to anyone at any age at, at any time. And the Children's Heart Foundation, along with the American Heart Association, are continuing, uh, continuing fighting for a cure for the world's number one birth defect. And whereas other risk factors for heart disease are preventable, obesity, physical inactivity, high blood pressure, smoking, high cholesterol, or diabetes. 
The American Heart Association teaches us the ways to reduce our risks while eliminating those we have control over. Whereas in the village of Bensonville in the month of February, we are committed to raising awareness of heart health and urge all of our citizens, young or old, to take care of your hearts. Now therefore, Village President Frank D. Simone, along with the Board of Trustees, to officially acknowledge the importance of raising awareness of heart health and proclaim February 11, 2020 in recognition of the American Heart Association and the Children's Heart Foundation. Presented this day, February 11, 2020. Is there a motion to su in support of the proclamation? Do you have a second? You have a second. There being a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Trustee Carmona? Yes. Trustee Franz? Yes. Trustee Fry? Yes. Trustee Lomax? Yes. Trustee Penicola? Yes. Trustee Perez? Yes. That's six. Motion carries. A couple notes, uh, uh, some announcements. The U.S. Census Bureau is currently hiring 34,000 part-time mm -hmm. positions for the Chicago region. Temporary census positions offer the perfect opportunity to earn extra money while helping your community. Mm. The positions will last several weeks and feature competitive wages, weekly paychecks, flexible hours, and paid training. So please visit our website for more information and the census, census application link. The ninth annual Law Enforcement Hockey Classic that benefits Honor Flight Chicago will be held, will be held at the Edge Ice Arena on March 14th at 7 p.m. Tickets can be purchased in advance or at the door. For more information, 6 p.m. says 7, just, just for the record. Well, 6 p.m.? Oh, it's an hour early. We did an hour early, right? 6 p.m., 6 p.m. So tickets can be purchased in advance or at the door. For more information or to purchase tickets, please visit our website. That is all for presidential remarks. Do we have a village manager's report? Just a few items. Um, there's a lot of scams going around. Uh, the village of Bensville keeps getting thrown into them. Uh, we had a business license scam saying that, you know, give us all your business license information that wasn't us. Um, we had one that was a GoFundMe page that said, uh, this person's really sick, donate money to him, go to this PayPal link uh, that was going around Bensonville. And then we also, there's a uh, census flyer that looks like it has political, uh, that looks like a census flyer that has political connotations. The census will never ask any political questions. The real census will go out um, in a few months and we'll make sure to market that heavily. So when in doubt, call Village Hall. Uh, that's what we're here for. Staff is uh, usually pretty good at being able to tell whether it's a scam or if it's official business with the village. Um, also, we've got a little bit of snow coming our way, so make sure that when you shovel your driveways, you don't shovel into the streets. That was a kind of a problem the last time, so no shoveling in the streets, we all know that. And then finally, I wanna uh, thank our multimedia department for our new monitors up here, the, the new old monitors. We did them on a budget, and it kinda, kinda opens the room up, so thanks to those guys. Is there a village attorney's report? I have no report, Mr. President. Is there any unfinished business to come before the board tonight? Is there any new business to come before the board tonight? I understand there is a need for executive session to discuss collective bargaining matters under 5 I ILCS 120-2C2. So is there a motion to enter into executive session to discuss collective bargaining matters at this time? Do you have a motion? Do I have a second? Second. Please call the roll. Trustee Carmona? Yes. Trustee Franz? Yes. Trustee, Trustee Fry? Fry. <laughs> Sorry. That's yes. excited. Trustee Lomax? Yes. Trustee Penicola? Yes. Trustee Perez? It's a birthday yes. girl. We're allowed to do that. Uh, yeah. what the motion about? carries and the board will enter into executive session. I would also like to advise the public that final action will not be taken when the board returns from executive session. We have now returned from uh, executive session. Village Clerk, would you please call the roll? President Simone. Here. Trustee Carmona? Here. Trustee Franz? Here. Trustee Fry? Yes. Trustee Lomax? Here. Trustee Penicola? Here. Trustee Perez? Here. That's seven. Is there a motion to adjourn the meeting? You have a motion. We have a second. You have a second. second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Motion carries. We are adjourned. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.